point. Uh, so we continue to this next story that I have to share with you, which involves the Pentagon. Here's a story that we recently po posted uh, that I put together for, again, the newsletter that is covering whistleblower stories. Uh, it's also up at shadowproof.com. Uh, just highlighting and, and, call, and bringing attention to the fact that the Pentagon informed the House Armed Services Committee uh, in the past couple of weeks that there was a massive or aggressive leak investigation into what uh, the Pentagon chief calls bad leaks that it took place in last fall. It's, it's unclear what he's particularly referring to, but I suppose bad leaks would be ones that uh, had given the public relations team at the Pentagon a bad day where they actually had to answer for their actions or thought it was a nuisance because they believed that lies were being spread about their agency. So, you know, boo-hoo. Uh, but he told personnel that they needed to focus on operational security and leaks continued. And so apparently he, allowed, he initiated an investigation into these leaks uh, whether it was for classified information or even unclassified information, and also to crack down on unauthorized discussions with the media. And uh, in his statement here, I mean, I'll just give you an example of what he said to condemn the leaks. Those of you who have followed some of these stories in the past 10 years, like I have, might re recall the kinds of words we hear from officials who get angry. And he manages to cram just about every kind of thing you could say against leaks into this one statement. He said, quote, all those things, again, hurt our nation's security. They undermine our troops, their safety. They affect our relations with our countries. They undermine our national policy. It's bad and it's happening all over the government, executive branch, legislative branch, to some degree. And he gives no specifics. He doesn't really say what he's talking about. And there's no examples of, of anyone being impacted as far as troop movements would go. And what I outline in this piece and what I would like to just point out today, if especially if you haven't heard that this was an investigation that was launched, is that there's this ma major insider threat program in the Pentagon and in all intelligence agencies with the Office of the Director for National Intelligence involved in overseeing. Uh, that's, uh, you know, if you remember lying, James Clapper, he was the ODNI and uh, the, the, the leader of this conglomerate uh, that oversees the intelligence apparatus or the security state, so to speak. And uh, it consults and, and it works with the Pentagon. And um, then there's insider threat programs at the FBI and the NSA and throughout the different parts of the federal government. And they all are probably functioning fairly similarly. But at the Pentagon, you know, in particular, one which is why I focused on here is this dynamic of having senior officials that are authorized to speak and and leak and uh, talk to the press um, and and other and able to get away with leaking because they're never going to get in trouble. People like Leon Panetta, who was the defense secretary who revealed details that were classified about the operation that, uh, that, that targeted the kill or capture mission that was launched against Osama bin Laden with SEAL Team 6. Um, you also have James Mattis, who's been able to leak information about the Afghanistan war uh, with no impact to himself whatsoever. Uh, David Petraeus is another example, although when he did his thing, got in trouble, he was with the CIA and no longer with the Pentagon. But these people are able to say what they want, benefit personally, and then meanwhile, you have an insider threat program that creates a climate of fear, uh, 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 spreads McCarthyism, encourages everyone around you to inform on you, become snitches, uh, and uh, to err on the side of caution. You know, if you have any doubts, but you have uh, uh, reservations about an individual, well, go to the insider threat task force and put them on their radar, and then we'll monitor them closely and, and keep an eye. And this all developed after Chelsea Manning's disclosures to WikiLeaks, and then it accelerated with Edward Snowden's whistleblowing on the NSA's mass surveillance programs. And I just wanted to make sure that I put something together here that showed the apparatus that has been built up in order to make it so uh, 
we don't really get information from people who would like to blow the whistle. It's it's a it's a system that is so controlled that's set up in such a way that there there could be whistleblowing through proper channels that we never even hear about. Uh, people who don't have faith or trust in that will go to the media, then they'll get in trouble, and they'll end up like Reality Winner, who is an example actually. The Insider Threat Program, one of its flaws, key flaws of many, is that it does not differentiate between people who are leakers and people who are violent. Uh, they lump Aaron Alexis and Nidal Hassan, who were shooters that went on, on rampages at military bases. Those are people who are seen as threats in the same way that reality winners treated as a threat. Chelsea Manning has been profiled and they've come up with indicators for how to look for future Chelsea Mannings future Edward Snowdens. They even had NSA whistleblower Thomas Drake in their files at one point as, and, and, and put together a character profile for what people could look for. And so uh, I just wanted to make sure that people considered what's happening right now. Uh, I think we've seen in the past week here that there was some effort by a handful of Democrats who actually are concerned about the military industrial complex trying to reduce the budget by 10%. Uh, there were uh, dozens upon dozens of Democrats, it seems, who rejected that in the Senate. Uh, you've had some moves with the massive military budget to try to put in some kind of measures for audits or encouraging whistleblowing, et cetera. I, but by and large, uh, because there isn't much done, and also because the Pentagon is moving towards more and more secrecy daily, and and against journalists trying to make it harder for people like myself to use the Freedom of Information Act to get details, uh, you have this dynamic playing out where you are going to have leaks and where you're going to have people who are either angry, disgruntled, if that's how they want to describe them, or people who have a conscience and want to say something and speak up and then get punished for speaking out.